This video today is about the book of Ezra. I know it's not part of the Bible, but uh, I'm going to explain a bit more about the book of Ezra and why it was removed from the Bible. Um, and then I'll be reading, um, if I can't do in this part, in part two, uh, a reading from the book of Ezra, uh, which talks about the last days and gives more detail about how the last days, what's going to happen. Um, first of all, let me explain a bit more about the book of Ezra. The, the book of Ezra, so sorry if I'm looking down for my notes, the book of Ezra came in two parts and was part of the Apocrypha. It was originally combined with the book of Nehemiah in a single book called Ezra and Nehemiah, but they became separated in the early centuries of the Christian era and removed from the Bible um, by Protestants they also removed other books of the Bible, such as turn the page, uh, the book of Maccabees, the book of Tobin, and others. They did this even though these books were recognized as canon. Since the beginning of church history, as a Protestant church historian wrote, his name is J.N.D. Kelly, you can do research about yourself, a historian, Protestant historian wrote, it should be observed that the Old Testament thus admitted as authoritative in the church was somewhat uh, bulkier and more comprehensive. It always included, though with varying degrees of recognition, the so-called apocrypha. So it was included in the in the original Bible. Um, now, regarding the the book of Ezra, who is Ezra? Well, Ezra was a Jewish leader and a, he was also a, a Jewish scribe who. Uh, in the time of the Babylonian exile, this is near the end of it, it was commissioned by the king of Persia at that time to come back and restore the walls of Jerusalem. And, and the book of Ezra, uh, books one and two, talk about uh, how they come back, how he leads uh, a group of Judean exiles living at Babylon at that time to come back um, and restore, the, uh, rebuild the temple and uh, the walls of Jerusalem. That was uh, their task to do. Uh, now that I explained a brief summary about uh, the book of Ezra and who Ezra was, um, I'm going to read a little bit from the book of uh, Second Ezra from the Apocrypha, which was removed by the Protestants. Um, so let me just read a bit about that. I found this chapter quite interesting. Um, it's in 2nd Ezra, it talks about uh, the end days and how it will be like. And it's quite big, and it's got a couple of pages here, a few pages, so I might make this video into two parts if it drags on too long. All right, let me begin. Um, Proclaim to my people the words of prophecy which I give you to speak, says the Lord, and have them written down because... They are trustworthy and true. Have no fear of plots against you, and do not be troubled by the unbelief of those who oppose you. For everyone who does not believe will die because of his unbelief. Beware, says the Lord, I am letting loose terrible evils on the world. Swords and famine. This is talking about the last days uh, time, the great tribulation time. Um, beware, says the Lord, I am letting loose terrible evils on the world. Sword and famine, death and destruction because wickedness has spread over the whole earth, and there is no room for further deeds of violence. Therefore, the Lord says, I will not keep silent about their godless sins. I will not tolerate their wicked deeds. See how the blood of innocent victims cries to me for vengeance, and the souls of the just never cease to plead with me. I will most surely avenge them, says the Lord, and will hear the plea of all the innocent blood that has been shed. My people are being led to the slaughter like sheep. I will no longer allow them to remain in Egypt, but will use all my power to rescue them. I will strike the Egyptians with plagues as I did before. So he's not talking about Egypt then, as I did before. So it will be similar plagues like, like, like the time of Egypt and destroy the whole land. Egypt is talking about, about New Babylon, uh, USA and, and others. All the, I think all the nations that are um, evil. How Egypt will mourn, shaken to its very foundations, when it is scourged and chastised by the Lord. 
how the tillers of the soil will mourn when the seed fails to grow and when their trees are devastated by blight and, and hail and terrible storm. Alas for the world and its inhabitants, the world and its inhabitants, the sword that will destroy them is not far away. Nation will draw sword against nation and go to war. Stable government will be at an end. One faction will prevail over another, caring nothing in their day of power for king or leading man of rank. A man may want to visit a city, but will not be able to do so, for ambition and rivalry have reduced cities to chaos. Destroy houses and filled men will panic. A man will violently assault his neighbour's house and plunder his goods. No pity will restrain him when he is in the grip of famine and grinding misery. See how I summon before me all the kings of the earth, says God, from sunrise and south wind, from east and south, to turn back and repay what they have been given. I will do to them as they are doing to my chosen people even to this day. I will pay them back in their own coin. These are the words of the Lord God. I will show sinners no pity. The sword will not spare those murderers who stain the ground with innocent blood. The Lord's anger has overflowed in fire to scorch the earth to its foundations and consume sinners like burning straw. Alas for sinners who flout my commands, says the Lord. I will show them no mercy. Away from me, you rebels. Do not bring your pollution near my holiness. The Lord well knows all who sin against him and consign them to death and destruction. Already disaster has fallen upon the world and you will never escape it. God will refuse to rescue you because you have sinned against him. How terrible the sight of what is coming from the east. Hordes of dragons from Arabia which will sally forth with countless chariots and from the first day of their advance their hissing will spread across the land to fill all who hear them with fear and consideration. Um, okay, let's go. I'm, I'll miss a little bit here and get to some other points. It goes on quite a lot here. Uh, let's see now. Okay, let's go on to this bit. See the clouds stretch from east and north to south. Their appearance is hideous, full of fury and tempest. They will clash together. They will pour over the land a vast storm. Blood shed by the sword will reach as high as a horse's belly. I think they spoke about that in the book of Revelation. A man's thigh or a camel's hop. Oh. Terror and tremble will cover the earth. All who see the raging fury will shudder and will be stricken with panic. Then vast storm clouds will approach from north and south and others from the west. From the winds from the east will be stronger still and will hold in check. And a raging cloud and its leader. Okay, we'll see where else. Uh, Hold on, man. I'll just carry on from uh, I missed a bit here. Let's carry on. But listen to me, you who are the Lord's servants, and take my words to heart. This is the word of the Lord. Receive it and do not disbelieve what he says. Calamities are here close to at hand and will not delay. When a pregnant woman is in the ninth month and the moment of her child's birth is drawing near, there will be two or three hours in which her womb will suffer pangs of agony and then the child will come from the womb without a moment's delay. In the same way, calamities will come on the earth without delay, and the world will groan under the pains that grip it. Listen to my words, my people, get ready for battle, and when the calamities that surround you, be as though you were strangers on earth. And, and also continues, hold on, it continues here, the sinner must not deny that he has sinned. He will only bring burning coals on his own head if he says, I haven't committed no sin against the majesty of God, for the Lord knows all who, what men do. He knows their plans, their schemes, and their innermost thoughts. He said, let the earth be made, and it was made, and let the heavens be made, and they were made. It was by the Lord's word that the stars were fixed in their places. The number of the stars is known to him. He looks into the depths with their treasures. He has measured the sea and everything it contains. By his word, he confined the sea within the bounds of the waters, and above the water he suspended the land. He spread out the sky like a vault and made it secure upon the waters. He provided the springs in the desert and pools on the mountain tops, as a source of rivers flowing down to the water, the earth. He created man and placed a heart in the middle of his body. He gave him spirit 
life and understanding, the very breath of Almighty God who created the whole world and searches out secret things in secret places. He knows well your plans and all your inward thoughts. Alas for sinners who try to hide their sins, the Lord will scrutinise all your, their deeds. He will call you to account. You will be covered with confusion when your sins are brought into the open and your wicked deeds will stand up to accuse you on that day. What can you do? How can you hide your sins from God and his angels? God is your judge. Fear him. Abandon your sins and have done with your wicked deeds forever. Then God will set you free from all distress. Fierce flames are being kindled to burn you. A great horde will descend on you. They will seize some of you. And I'll continue. Hold on. And I'll finish off with this last bit. Listen, you whom I have chosen, says the Lord. The days of harsh suffering are close at hand, but I will rescue you from them, says the Lord. Away with your fears and doubts, for God is your leader. You who follow my commandments and instructions, says the Lord God, must not let your sins weigh you down, nor your wicked deeds get the better of you. Alas, for those who are entangled in their sins and overrun with their wicked deeds, they are like the field overrun by bushes with brambles across the path and no way through, completely shut off and doomed to destruction by fire. So that was part of the second Ezra uh, in the book of uh, Apocrypha, which was removed from the Bible. So um, there's other, many other books that were removed from the Bible, um, but that's just one of them. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed uh, this video, and uh, God bless you. And if anyone out there doesn't know the Lord, please uh, turn to the Lord now and repent, and your eyes will be open to the truth that, that Jesus is coming very soon. Goodbye. God bless.